What if Obi-Wan woke up before Anakin could try to kill Count Dooku? That's our story for today. But folks, before we begin, please check the pinned comments. I've partnered with Onasaber.com to host a giveaway for not one, but two sabers. Here are the details of how to enter. Step 1. Hit the subscribe button on this channel. It's a giveaway that you have to be subscribed for, so only subscribers of the channel are eligible to win. Step 2. Click the link in the pinned comment down below to access the Google form for the giveaway. Fill that out and you're all set. Huge shout out to Onasaber for working on this with me. They also have an amazing Black Friday special going on this month. Buy any replica saber and get a free Padawan saber. Simply add both to your cart and get the Padawan saber automatically free at checkout. The link to the website also in the pinned comment. Check. Let's get right into it. Count Dooku looked over to Obi-Wan Kenobi, knocked unconscious, and knew that this was his opportunity to taunt Skywalker, push him ever closer to the darkness that will eventually consume him. And so he did, telling Skywalker that he has hate, he has anger, but he does not use them. This would prove to be a mistake in the end, as Skywalker gave in to his hate right here, right now, swinging at Dooku with ferocity and anger, pushing Dooku further back until Skywalker was able to grab his wrists and cut right through them, leaving Dooku helpless on his knees, with Skywalker holding both lightsabers to his neck. And across the room, a dazed Obi-Wan Kenobi began to wake up ever so slowly. His eyes began to process what they were seeing, Anakin standing above Dooku. Finally, they would capture Dooku and bring an end to this war. But something strange was happening. Obi-Wan listened closely as he heard Palpatine snapping at Anakin to kill Dooku. Anakin was hesitant, but Palpatine barked do it, and Obi-Wan could see Anakin begin to move his arms. So Kenobi acted. He quickly used the force to grab Dooku, pulling him away from Anakin and saying, this is not the Jedi way. He looked to the Chancellor, asking why he would tell Anakin to do something so far removed from the Jedi way. And in this moment, Dooku had limited options. He was without hands, and he despised the idea of synthetic robotic hands, but he would need them now. He would just have to escape, and it was clear that his master was willing and ready to dispose of him, so Dooku could be taken willingly as a prisoner, or he could tell the Jedi the truth and escape in the chaos. The choice was easy. Dooku looked to Obi-Wan and said, You already know why Palpatine would ask this. Remember, Obi-Wan, the beginning of the war, Geonosis. Remember what I told you. And Obi-Wan remembered Dooku, saying the Sith have control over the Republic. And horror struck Kenobi as he looked to Palpatine, and he said, It's you. You're the Sith Lord. And he pointed his lightsaber at Palpatine. Anakin was completely taken aback by all of this. He looked at Palpatine, waiting for him to deny it. Palpatine muttered, So be it. And released his own restraints, then blasted lightning at the Jedi. The room shook with power, and Dooku saw stray bolts of the chain lightning fly past his face. The Jedi and Sith were distracted, and so he began stumbling out of the room. Without hands, everything felt so strange, but he could use the force to push elevator buttons, or even use his comlink, floating it next to his face as he ran through the ship to the escape pods. Once safely inside of a pod, he called for Grievous to come pick him up in the air and turn the shields to his Separatist flagship off. Grievous was frustrated by this, but he would follow orders. And back on the bridge, Anakin pushed through the lightning, redirecting it back at Palpatine. It caught him by surprise, but the Sith Lord flipped away. Palpatine wished he had his lightsaber, as Anakin and Obi-Wan circled around him. The most famous Jedi duo in the Order found out his identity. They would have to die. And the fight would continue on, Sidious flipping through the air, his mastery of the Force keeping the Jedi on edge. But they did not back down. And eventually, the ship began to shake violently and be turned sideways, and the Jedi took this opportunity. Obi-Wan used the force on Palpatine's legs, knocking him down, and Anakin jumped in to slice off his hands, like he did with Dooku. As the ship settled, Anakin stood with his lightsaber to Palpatine's throat. And Obi-Wan told Anakin to stand down, that this still was not the Jedi way. But Anakin was not listening. Palpatine had been his mentor like a father that Anakin never had, but it was all an act. He was not a friend, and without the nightmares, he had nothing real to offer. Anakin remembered all of the assassination attempts on Padme, 
how he was stuck in the Outer Rim for months away from her. It was all Palpatine. So calculated, so perfect, always ready for anything. And once again, Anakin saw him smile gently. He was going to try and manipulate Anakin again. But as he opened his mouth, only a gasp came out. And then his head rolled to the ground. Anakin cut him down. He was dead, and Obi-Wan could hardly blame Anakin, but he was still disappointed. Now they had to get out of here. Anakin and Obi-Wan sprinted through the docking ramp, disengaging just as the Invisible Hand flagship went up in flames. They made it safely inside, and the Separatist fleet retreated as the Jedi returned to Coruscant, with everything changed. Count Dooku flew with General Grievous to the planet Skako Minor, meeting up with Wat Tambor and the rest of the Separatist Council. Dooku had new hands created, hands that reminded him of Anakin's, and Dooku hated it, but the Separatist Council looked at him with more respect, like he was a warrior willing to do whatever it took. And for once, Dooku was in complete control of everything. The war effort was no longer being subdued by his master. He had hundreds of thousands more Separatist reinforcements just waiting to be used. With Sidious in control, the Separatists were never meant to win. Instead, they were supposed to be used to be defeated, turn the Republic into an empire. But that would no longer be the case. Sidious was gone, he could feel it in the Force, and so Dooku would execute his plan. Destroy the Republic, rebuild his government from the ground up. And on Coruscant, the Republic was in panic as the Chancellor was missing. He did not return from the battle with Skywalker and Kenobi, at least that was the rumor. The citizens and the Senate was in panic, as the war seemed like it was so close to ending. But inside of the Jedi Council, Anakin and Obi-Wan told the Council everything, and there was a deep realization. A realization that they were consistently being played by the Sith, every step of the way. If the Chancellor was the Sith, that meant this entire war was orchestrated. Kamino and the clones, likely created and hidden by the Sith, and the Jedi walked right into it all. And the war they thought they were winning, may in fact be ending soon, but no longer in their favor. The Council was deeply concerned about what the Separatists would do now that Palpatine was not balancing the scales, and so the Council decided they would have to take over the Republic until this was all settled down. Senators were called into the Senate building to discuss what happened to Palpatine, when eventually a central pod rose with Mace Windu, Obi-Wan Kenobi, and Anakin Skywalker. The Senate quieted down, and Windu described what happened, how Skywalker and Kenobi boarded the ship to save Palpatine, only to discover that he was not only working with Dooku and the Separatists, but he was leading them. The Senate was in uproar. They couldn't believe this. Palpatine was a great leader, but eventually the Jedi calmed them down, saying that the war would only increase from here. With Dooku in full control, things could get messy. They needed an ally as interim senator, so they asked Bail Organa to step in. Bail accepted, and the Jedi returned to the temple with Bail as the new Chancellor, with the Jedi influence. And as they returned to the temple, Yoda delivered bad news. Across all battlefronts in the galaxy, clones and Jedi were pushed back heavily, or even forced to completely retreat. It was like the Separatists just doubled all of their armies, in every battle. On Megiddo, Kiati Mundi was blown off a bridge and missing. Cato Nemoidia was lost, as Plo Koon was killed in the air. It seemed like every battleground was falling, and the Republic was pulling away from these planets. And for around a week, the Republic would retreat from countless planets as the Separatist armies were back on the offensive, and Dooku was nowhere to be found. Dooku was orchestrating the war from a distance, while he worked heavily on two important projects. One, the long-term project, the Death Star began construction, and two, the Separatist tactical droids had spent the war studying the clones, and they just completed a bioweapon designed specifically to wear down and kill the Jango Fett genome. This was a weapon that had been in development for a long time under the tactical droids, but with Sidious in the way, this weapon would never have finished development. It was a complete game changer, but under Dooku, it was perfect. It was designed to only affect clone troopers, killing them quickly similar to the Blue Shadow Virus from Naboo, but only effective on clones. And Dooku had the perfect plan. Around 100 canisters of the virus were developed, and this was all they would get, and they were strategically placed inside of 100 B2 super battle droids. They would invade Kamino with these 100 droids, specifically placed, and they would lose the battle on purpose. 
Once the Republic thought it was over, the canisters would be activated, infecting every facility on Kamino. And the plan would go into action. On Kamino, Anakin Skywalker and Obi-Wan Kenobi were dispatched to defend it from any incoming Separatist of attack. And when they did attack, it was vintage Skywalker and Kenobi next to the 212th and the 501st. Ahsoka also agreed to help after returning with Rex and Maul back to Coruscant. The Separatist attack seemed sloppy, almost as if they were overconfident from their string of recent victories. And the battle would last roughly three hours, with droids barely making it past the first lines of defense. And while the battle was going on, the 100 super battle droids with canisters hidden were dropped onto key areas. Ventilation systems, hallways with four exits, barracks, everywhere possible to infect all possible clones. And eventually, the Jedi stood watching as the Separatists went into full retreat. They won the battle, or so they thought, and the destroyed super battle droid canisters were activated around the facilities. Around an hour later, the Jedi sat around a data table with Rex and Cody, going over where the Separatists might attack next, when Rex began to violently cough, and he fell to his knees. Everyone gathered around Rex as he kept coughing up blood, and it was terrible. Something inside of him was spreading fast, and he looked up to the others, unable to breathe suddenly. His eyes were bloodshot, and Rex fell backwards. Cody said he would run to get a medic, but as he got to the door, he too fell to his knees, coughing, and they went through the same process, dying quickly. The Jedi felt nothing, but as they ran to open the door, all they suddenly heard was violent coughing, screaming, alarms blaring from all around them. The Jedi sprinted through the hallways, seeing hundreds of dead clones everywhere. The coughing and screaming got quieter and quieter until an eerie silence filled the air. It was like every single clone stationed here suddenly disappeared. And Anakin grabbed his comm, calling up to the Republic blockade above the planet. No reply. It appears the same thing happened to the clones above Kamino. Anakin, Obi-Wan, and Ahsoka realized the Separatists did not invade Kamino to take over. They invaded to destroy it. And the three Jedi sprinted out of the facility, looking up to space. The Separatist fleet was back, and they pushed through the Republic blockade with no one alive to stop them. And then they rained fire down on the facilities, sending them into the ocean below as the Jedi got into their ship, barely escaping the planet, as the Republic reinforcements were destroyed. Dooku had every advantage. He quite literally created the army, and now he destroyed it. Kamino was gone. The Republic was losing. Fast. Anakin, Obi-Wan, and Ahsoka returned to Coruscant still in shock, over the horrors of what they just saw, and they began detailing it to the Jedi Council. The Republic was rapidly losing options on how to go on with this war. Kamino was gone, and therefore the Republic army was severely depleted. They were losing ground on every battlefield, and they would need to use some less traditional Jedi methods to win, and they would need the least traditional of all of the Jedi to help them. And so Anakin was given a special assignment. It was simple. Find the Separatist leaders, get them to tell him how to shut down the droids, and he was to go alone. The rest of the Jedi and clones would stay here, defend Coruscant as long as possible. Anakin has until Coruscant falls to shut down the droids. And Anakin accepted the mission, thanking the Jedi for their trust. At this point, he would do anything to end the war. His wife was pregnant, and he was determined to raise his family under Republic rule and so Anakin took off into space on his mission, while the Senate received a message from Count Dooku. When Windu was here, he and Bale listened to Dooku. The Sith Lord told the Republic it was over. It was time to stand down, or everyone would die. But Windu said what he said long ago on Geonosis. The Republic and the Jedi would not be hostages. And again, Dooku gave a sad sigh, saying that this would be a costly mistake, and the second attack on Coruscant was launched an all-out Separatist fleet versus what remained of the Republic, every possible Jedi and clone giving it everything they could, while the Separatists poured everything they had into taking the planet. The Republic had one goal, hold out until Anakin finds a way to win, like he always did. And Anakin did what he had to do, traveling first to the planet Monolist. He sought out military advisors of Sand Hill, Separatist leader in charge of the banking clan, and Anakin threatened to get information. 
Eventually, someone talked, and Anakin learned that the Separatists were dispatched to Utapau, and so Anakin's mission continued to Utapau, where he landed and searched the area for a couple hours, until he eventually found them. General Grievous was with them, and Anakin did not hesitate. He jumped down to the ground, igniting his lightsaber. Grievous barked at the leaders to go to their ship, follow the coordinates installed in the ship, and the leaders began running away. Anakin leapt above Grievous, sprinting after the ship, but Grievous got on all four legs, running after Anakin, grabbing his robe, and forcing him to the ground. Grievous ignited his lightsabers and swung at Anakin, but the Jedi was too quick, diving under Grievous's legs, and Anakin used all of his strength to throw a tracking device onto the ship of the leaders just before the ship got out of range. Grievous growled in anger. He had to alert the Separatists that they were being tracked, but he would have to kill Skywalker first. And Grievous ignited his four lightsabers again, charging Anakin. This would not be easy for Anakin. His lightsaber form was not greatly suited for Grievous, but he could adjust. If he could just get one of Grievous's lightsabers, he could use a new form, the form he taught Ahsoka, and he could defeat the cyborg. Anakin, fueled by his determination to end the war, attacked with a flurry of aggressive strikes, and Grievous countered each move with his sabers. The clashing echoed across the terrain, and despite Anakin's skills, Grievous's mechanical strength gave him an edge. The general's strikes were swift and unpredictable, gradually wearing down Anakin, and in a moment of desperation, Anakin tapped into the force, summoning all of his strength. With a powerful push, he created enough distance to make a daring move. He focused on disarming Grievous, targeting one of the lightsabers, and with a perfect move, Anakin succeeded, knocking one of the lightsabers out of his grip. He grabbed the fallen lightsaber, now wielding two of them for himself. The battlefield dynamics shifted, as Anakin unleashed a new assault, attacking from different angles with a dual-bladed onslaught. Grievous was caught off guard by the sudden change, struggling to adapt. Anakin's aggressive attacks pushed the cyborg to the brink. He spun one more time, disarming Grievous of another lightsaber, leaving the general with just two. The tide had turned. Anakin, now in control of the situation, pressed the advantage. He was running out of time. He channeled the dark side, tapping into his anger, and with a powerful strike, Anakin overcame Grievous, and the cyborg general collapsed to the rocky ground. Anakin pushed him off the ledge, and he sprinted to his ship, activating the tracking beacon. He followed the tracking beacon to where the Separatists said they were. Mustafar. As Anakin flew to Mustafar, the second battle above Coruscant was in full swing. It quickly became the battle with the most casualties, as clones and Jedi fought desperately for the planet. Dooku watched from above, as his Separatist army quickly began to gain ground, getting ships inside of Coruscant. Today, he would be victorious. The Republic and the Jedi would either surrender or die. And on Mustafar, Anakin finally landed his ship on a landing platform, a good distance from the Separatist leadership's shuttle. He ran through the Mustafar rooms, anger and fear burning through him, the dark side pulsing in his veins, and he let it. Anakin was using it to do what he had to do, in order to save the Jedi, save the Republic, save Padme. And eventually, Anakin entered the room with the Separatist leadership. It was some kind of data control room, and immediately droids began firing at him. They were dealt with in seconds, and Anakin moved like a blur through the room, killing Separatist leaders without mercy, until only three remained. Newt Gunray, Watt Tambor, Poggle the Lesser. Anakin pointed his lightsaber at them, asking how to shut down the droid armies, saying they will die unless they tell him. But they played dumb, refusing to tell Anakin, and he did not have time for this. So he cut down Poggle and Tambor in one swing, then stared at Gunray, giving him one last chance. But Gunray was in shock, or just too scared to speak. So Anakin lifted him up by the throat with one arm, then used the other to probe his mind. Gunray was clawing at his neck, trying to hold on for his life. As Anakin sifted his mind, he searched thoughts, memories, until he found it. Anakin snapped Gunray's throat and sprinted into the control room, finding the hidden Separatist beacon, and he first transmitted Gunray's clearance signal, and then he sent out the droid, shut down command, throughout the galaxy. It was done, and Anakin fell to his knees, realizing how far down into the dark he had gone. But on Coruscant, the Jedi Council was in the temple, 
as thousands of droids marched up the stairs, and many more were flying to the temple. Other Jedi were in the Senate building as droids began to infiltrate it, shooting down Jedi and Senators who resisted. Dooku walked into the Senate building, watching it all unfold. It was not how he wanted it to happen, but this was necessary to rebuild. But suddenly, as the Temple and Senate building were about to be overrun, everything changed. The droids slowed down before stopping altogether. They were completely shut down, falling to the ground all at once. Dooku didn't think it was possible. How was it possible? Only Separatist leaders could do this, and Grievous was protecting them. Deep down, Dooku knew there was one man capable of this, Skywalker, and Dooku watched everything he built fall apart as Yoda, Windu, Obi-Wan, and Kit Fisto got to him with as many clones as possible, making him surrender. There were only around a thousand Jedi left, but Dooku was completely alone. Grievous was gone, the Separatist leaders were gone, his army was gone, he would not be a hostage, and Dooku ignited his lightsaber only to have blaster fire poured on from about a hundred clones just itching for Dooku to make this move. He fell dead, and the Republic emerged victorious. On Mustafar, Anakin sat crying, thinking he lost himself, but he felt a familiar, calming presence. Qui-Gon. Qui-Gon appeared and said Anakin did well, and true strength in this moment would be to resist the dark side, go back to the Jedi, back to Padme, trust in the Force. Anakin couldn't believe his eyes, but he talked to Qui-Gon for a bit longer, calming himself, letting the darkness fade away. And eventually, Anakin returned to the temple, where Windu, Yoda, Kenobi, and Fisto were the only four surviving council members. They thanked Anakin for coming through, offering him the rank of Jedi Master, along with a seat on the rebuilding Jedi Council. Anakin accepted, and he would help the Jedi to rebuild. And the rebuild would be sparked by two new Padawans, Luke and Leia, and they would be trained as a sign of hope for the galaxy as the Republic rebuilt itself with Bail Organa leading the charge to rid corruption, return the Republic to serving its people. And folks, that's where our story ends today. I appreciate you for watching. Thanks a ton. Once again, lightsaber giveaway in the pinned comment. Check that out, and I'll see you in the next video.